Hey everybody, it's Matt Michaels here on the DeFalco Files with the owner and creator of FSW here in Las Vegas, the future stars of wrestling, Mr. Joe DeFalco. Joe, how you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. You know, it, it's good to see that, you know, the real leader of the faction is with us today. Not, Look at this. you know, oh. not that guy who claims to be Braxton, who claims he's the leader and tries to tell everybody, but a guy like Fresco, now that's a stand-up guy. Oh, my God. You see what, see what the plot's already? We not even a minute in. He's already trying to put plots on, man. I'm putting you over. What do you mean? I'm saying good things about you. Oh, gosh. Well, look at this. What's going on, y'all? Ha-ha. <laughs> you know what's popping. It's your boy, the street sweeper, the fly, the baddest man alive. And I'm stopping by on y'all show since I did you a solid for the last one. Yes, sir. Yeah, Fre Fresco, Matic, uh, Fresco Matic is joining us today. Fresco has his own show in which Joe was on uh, recently, a few weeks back. And, um, you know, it, it's time to return a little favor here and uh, turn the uh, questions on to Fresco. Um, let's start with your show. What prompted you to start doing a talk show? You know, uh, I actually went to school for uh, broadcast journalism and communication. I, I double majored in college for it. So I always had a, you know, a knack to like do something of the sort. Truth be told, I thought instead of being a wrestler, I would be like a radio host or something growing up or some, sure. type, of, some type of deal like that. So I was really into it. Um, but you know, finishing up through college and then getting more into, into wrestling, I thought maybe, you know, not the right time. I was doing music too at the time. So I was doing all types of different arts and, you know, just trying to diversify myself. Sure, uh, sure. But last year, I really thought about it because it was a pandemic and, you know, we all had our own struggles. And what I was trying to do, I was trying to find a way to, you know, gain some ground on everyone else you know, and I was kind of doing stuff around here on the coast and everywhere else. Like, what what could I do? What could I bring to the table that no one else is really bringing? And I thought to myself, okay, what are my assets? I'm like, okay, I I went to school for broadcast and, and communications. Um, let's let's think of doing a show. And I was talking actually with you know uh, Aaron Phillips, and you know he talked to me about you know doing a possible show. And I looked into it and realized you know what I wanted to do. And I was like, all right, like, let's do a live talk show where I'm, you know, I'm the host and we bring in guests. We talk about, you know, the coach, we talk about hip hop, we talk about wrestling, we talk about all things, you know, kind of in that world and we can have some real fun with it. So, shoot, I, I linked up with some sponsors and, you know, we made that possible. So a year, a year later, 23 episodes in, I'm. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it so far. It's given me a whole new dimension in my game, you know? No, absolutely. That's 100%. And I think that one of the things about you that I've always liked is that you're very smart and you're willing to sit back and learn and listen and observe, which makes you one of those deadly type of guys because you're not putting yourself out there like some of the guys you're waiting for your moments and you make some good decisions. Um, so this idea of having a show and putting yourself ahead of other people on the West Coast, very smart, very smart. Now, Joe, like I said, you just did the show recently. How do you feel that Fresco is as a personality in terms of being a host? I think... Uh... He needs to show that off a little bit more. Unfortunately, it becomes a little difficult because guys like Ice Williams and Braxton, they have very, very large personalities. And it's tough enough getting a word in edgewise when it was just Braxton. And now with Ice there, you know, you know, he Fresco's kind of got a bobbing and weaving over there to, to get in a little something, you know. Thank God Watson's a mute, or they'd really have some problems. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, I just, 
I just think it goes back to your point earlier, uh, Mike, about, you know, really picking your spots. Um, with guys like Ice and Braxton, you know, you kind of find where wh what's needed for the promo, what's needed for the segment, what's needed for the conglomerate of the group. And for me, I know what I can do. I know what I can bring. And I know that, you know, I, I can do all that stuff. But when I got a guy like Ice, you know, the longest running No Limits champion in history, I got a guy like Braxton who helped get us all together and is also a hell of a promo. You know, Fresco will just, will always be Fresco. He's always going to find his way to do his thing. But, you know, with those guys, you just got to pick your spots and make sure that, you know, you're still seen. Um, you're still doing your thing and we're all a team. We're all really trying to work together and fill different voids that, you know, that maybe cover up each other's weaknesses and more strengths. So what's needed for me, I think, in, the, in some like the faction is to make sure I get, you know, get those big points home, but also make sure that I'm seeing, I'm doing, I'm doing the fresco and it's enhancing not only myself, but enhancing the faction brand as well. So it, it's really just kind of picking your spots and, you know, people know I can cut a promo. So, uh, you know, I got nothing to, to, to prove on that. I still, I still get mine, you know, I still get mine. Joe, if you had to uh, compare the faction to the nation of domination and obviously ice would be the rock and uh, Braxton would be Farouk. So is Fresco more of the Godfather, D'Lo, or Mark Henry? Well, first off, Braxton would be more like the lawyer guy, Clarence Mason. Oh, my God. Say he'd be like Farouk. Are you, like, Come insane? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I think Fresco, character-wise, for, for what he portrays, I'd say D'Lo, but then Watson would be more like that because... When, with the nation, D'Lo kind of came in, did his thing, and he didn't really say a lot. But you yeah. also remember when The Godfather first started, he didn't say anything. And that's how kind of the roots of The Godfather started to where it was like, yeah, call me The Godfather. And then all of a sudden he started wearing the outfits and doing the things. And I, so that would make me say Fresco could lean more toward uh, The Godfather because it's taken him a while to get out of the shell because early on, you know, we'll be honest, you know, Fresco De Niro, they were the shits, you know, Gosh, they, come on, man. Look you at know, <laughs> they were not good. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he had a partner who, you know, felt that he should be at a much higher level when he was still just a very inexperienced guy. And, you know, Fresco was just looking to get on the show, getting in matches so he was a guy at the time working dark matches, the pre-show matches, a six-man tag, because we were trying to get some spots for him, but he was really nowhere near ready to be, you know, part of what we would call the main roster to where, you know, okay, we got to fill something in for Fresco. You know, now it's like, okay, we know we're going to do something with the faction whether it's a singles, whether it's a tag, whether it's a six man to get Braxton in the mix, you know, they know they're going to be on most shows. You know, it isn't like, hey, Joe's putting up the schedule Thursday. Oh, cool. You know, I got a match Saturday. Oh, awesome. It's an eight man tag. You, you know what I mean? And that's where he had to start. So he had to work his way from the, from the bottom. And without he's come a long way you know he's a guy that did show up to train a lot you know he didn't you know sometimes some of these guys take it for granted they get put on a show and then all of a sudden you barely see him in training and to this day you know I see Fresco a lot more than I see a lot of other people. Fresco what is it about FSW and training here that first drew you to FSW to train and what is it that has um, made you feel like you want to keep coming on a regular basis, even though you now are getting the opportunities where a lot of guys, like Joe said, kind of, you know, step back a little bit and don't show up as much because they, you know, 
think that they've hit the big time now. Um, what has it been like for you in terms of your training? Yeah, um, you know, for me, I always wanted to train at FSW, but my route wasn't wasn't straight to FSW. I had to kind of go the the lower ranks, the the you know the 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 minor leagues, the, you know, at some point uh, to kind of get my training, get my ground, and then you know. I was having a struggle kind of in the beginning because I was just trying to, you know, I think every wrestler has a point where they got to really balance out their their shoot life with wrestling life and trying to yeah. figure out how to kind of make that work. So you're you're there consistently because, you know, I, I, I'd show up, but, you know, work schedule and stuff like that would get in the way of a lot of things. So to the, it was at a point where I had to kind of change my work schedule, change my jobs to kind of make it happen. And then, um, you know, I've always trained with, you know, Sin. Sin's like my my first coach, him and D'Lo. And, uh, you know, when they transitioned over, it was like, cool, uh, you know, go to FSW. And the thing about what FSW is, unlike most other places in, in the country or, or around, it's continuous training. There's not a, you know, three-month, four-month program where you do some stuff and you get up out of here. Uh, you yeah. know, you, continue, you, 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 you can continuously get better at what you do by being in the ring, just kind of being – you know, just kind of being osmosis. And I think, again, during the pandemic, I was like, okay, how am I going to, you know, catch up to some of these guys and, and show what I could do? Part of it was just putting in more work, you know, than other folks by making sure I was going to training, making sure I was getting something out of it, making sure that, you know, I'm getting the, the body reps and, and, the, and, the, and the field reps. So when, when my name was called, I'd be ready. So uh, I, a lot of it just, you know, trying to take advantage of the time I had, um, you know, I work too and stuff, no excuses. You just got to, you know, make sure, um, you know, and, and I found a way now where my schedule works out with wrestling while working in the mornings and, you know, boom, weekends off. So we here, you know, we were at a point yeah. now where we can make it all happen and no, and no, and no setbacks. So why not use the opportunity, you know? So Joe, when you see someone like Fresco, who obviously is talented and has been working with guys like Sin, um, do you then take into consideration that factor of something like the pandemic, which a lot of the guys just kind of disappeared and here is Fresco putting in the work. Does that make you believe more in a performer showing that they want to get better? And of course you'll see the growth in the ring, but you as a promoter, as a booker, does that influence you and in how you know you can utilize someone because they show reliability in coming to training? Not really, because the bottom line is you have to be good enough for that spot. So by doing what he's doing is going to get him on the radar and it's going to make me or the trainers pay attention to a guy working hard, which all it really does is maybe give him a few more opportunities that he may not have gotten before. And then when you get those opportunities, if you take advantage of those opportunities and you perform well enough, well, then you'll get some better opportunities. And that's how the, the, the pecking order goes. You know, it, it was kind of like, you know, FSW versus GCW. And of course, there's a lot of guys on the main roster who didn't get to be on those shows. And, you know, unfortunately, people like to take things personally, but the bottom line is FSW has been an entity for 12 years. It's disrespectful for guys like Cody and Funny Bone and Remy Marcel not to get a spot because the Suavecitos want a spot. You know, they got to earn the right to get that spot. You know, there is pecking orders, and that's how it is everywhere in the wrestling business. Yeah. And the pecking order of companies outside of Vegas looking for talent are going to look at an FSW guy before they're going to look at a guy from another school because we have a reputation of having good talent. Santino's Brothers has, you know, good talent. And people are aware of that wrestling school. So if somebody from FSW brings somebody to Arizona 
and there's a spot available, there's a better chance that he's going to get that spot over somebody else that kind of just came in on its own. And it's the same thing with us, with Dom in Arizona and Santino. So when, you know, Tito brought Che and then Che brought Douglas James and they brought Eli Everfly and just recently Adrian Quest brought a guy uh, who worked the show this past week, Romeo Cruz. And it was like, I had never heard of the dude. And it's like, wow, this guy's really good. And on Future Shock this Friday, uh, th there's a guy who is coming in, one of Mike Rain's students from Best of the West. And he made me aware, hey, if there's a spot. So I made a spot. This guy, his name's Prince Gabriel. Now, I have never seen him. I have never heard of him. But if Mike Rain is going to put the vouch on, if he's going to say, hey, this is my guy, if you can give him a shot, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and believe that this guy is capable of wrestling on our show. And now he is going to get an opportunity. And, and that's how it is with the local guys, where we try to give them opportunities, but they, but they have to perform to the level of what we're doing. You know, some of these guys, they get on future shock and they get on the majority of those, but they don't really get on that many. And it isn't anything other than they're, they're young, they're inexperienced. They aren't ready yet. You know, I'm not going to just throw some guy in against Hammerstone because I'm bringing in Hammerstone to, to perform. You know, Hammerstone doesn't need to come in and wrestle some kid who's had three matches. You know, you, you're, you're trying to give everybody, you know, the basis to succeed. You know, if I'm going to pay a guy like Hammerstone to come in, I want him to have a good match. You know, yeah. and, you know, we, we gave a young guy that has been doing very well, Brett the Threat, you know, the opportunity, and he's gotten to wrestle Remy Marcel, and he got, you know, and, and, and he got that, he got that, you know, ability to take a shot, do, the, do what he did, you know, he held his own, and even though he's a rookie, He's a guy that is definitely on the radar. He gets a lot of heat, you know, between the faction, the Suavecitos and Brett the Threat, you know, they do the job that they need to do where mm -hmm. they're looking to be that cool heel and they're looking to be like, you know what? We need to sell t-shirts. We need to be like the NWO. We need to be cool. <laughs> you know, first off, any faction with Braxton and it's not going to be cool anyway. Oh, come on now. So, we, so, so cool. why we even cool bother? You know? We cool. We cool. It, we come on now. You can feel the energy when we walk out. Ain't nobody. You, you can't, you can't fake the funk on that. Come on now. The energy is different. And Braxton's part of that. The, 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 ah, white camera. Everyone, everyone knows what that means. Like, oh, snap. Braxton, he should be giving part of his cut to Fresco there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, it's his squad, man. It's, it's the whole you squad. Know, I, I think it's, I think it's uh, horrendous that Braxton gives Fresco less of a cut than he gets. I think that is horrible. Oh, look at this. Look, look at, you know. he's stirring it up. He's stirring it up. Look at y'all. Y'all crazy. <laughs> well, you know, Joe's got a, a little bit of a point here, which is interesting. And that is when the faction started, it was you, Watson, and Braxton. You add ice to the mix. So now you have four pieces of the pie. Does your cut go down? I mean, do you feel uh, any less of the uh, the appreciation because now it's, it's four guys? Or, you know... Uh, are you looking at it as, hey, man, we watch out for each other. We protect each other. And, uh, you know, if ice gets a little bit more, ice gets a little bit more. You know, for, for the faction, even before ice, we felt like we were, you know, clicking on a lot of on a lot of cylinders. I know we didn't get the does we needed to, but I think we, we were building a lot of a lot of goodwill. Like, OK, we, we're on to something here. We're on to something. And I felt like we were going to be dangerous. Like me and Watson just just really started kind of teaming up more recently. So we're getting more and more of that chemistry together. So 
I felt like we were on the uptick regardless, but then, you know, you add Ice Williams, you add all that energy, all that charisma, you know, he's, he's one of the, he's one of the, he's one of the big, you know, big guns out here too, to add him to the mix and to have us all go for a common goal. Cause you know, it's easy to just think, you know, what you feel like you should do as far as, you know, your, your role in something. But when something is much bigger than you and together it's becoming big as a whole, you know, right now, I feel like, you know, lights, camera factions is the best it's ever been. You know, we're, you know, we, we got, we got spots going. We're, we, we went down to Knox pro. We're going back to Knox pro. We're going to AWF to take on your boys R and B for the AWF tag titles, me and Watson, you know, we're going back to Hollywood. We're, we're doing a whole lot. And I feel like people are really starting to see what we bring. So, um, you know, whatever the cut may be, I'm happy with my cut. I'm happy with my cut for now. Cause I know I'm gonna make the most of my cut. And, and when my time is right, you know, my time is right. My time will be right. But, you know, lights, camera, faction right now, you know, really the sky is the limit. I mean, you can, you can feel it. You really you know, can feel and, it. And the bottom line is Fresco's cut now is 20 times more than it was when he was teaming up with that pit bull imitator. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fresco De Niro had a, it was, we were, we were babies, man. We were, we were babies when all that was going on. We didn't, we didn't have a clue. <laughs> we were working on it, you know. No, I know. But sometimes some people don't want to be, be told what they need to do. You know, I remember talking to you guys in the back and, and the frowny faces that were going on. So, uh, not you. <laughs> but, you know, people, unfortunately, sometimes people don't want to hear negative, uh, you know, critiques. Yeah. And, and the bottom line is you ain't going to get better if everybody's greasing the wheel and telling you how great you are when you aren't great. And yeah. sometimes there's a lot of people who feel like, oh, I don't give enough praise to people, but I'm not going to throw out random praise for somebody who's who's not getting the job done. You know, the bottom line is if, if you're going to be an FSW, you know, you may be able to get away with that in other companies you know, you know, we pride ourselves, you know, we have a fan base from around the United States. And, and if we put on shit, it looks bad on me. It doesn't look bad on the wrestler. You know, people may say, oh, that guy's the shits, but you know, I'm the one who put him in there. And we always talk about it. The reason why we draw so well, where we draw and sometimes there's really great talent that's wrestling elsewhere around. And, we're still going to outdraw. And why is that? It's because the fans who have been around and know what FSW is know that FSW is going to bring in some of the best talent that those people are going to see. If Hammerstone and Graves ain't on the card, maybe Chris Bay's on the card. Maybe Vandegrift, Damian Drake, Ice Williams, Remy Marcel, Cody. You know, we have so many talented guys that even when we bring in a new cat like Jordan Cruz or Class or Eli Everfly or Gatson or Tito or Toa or Juicy, they know that Joe's not bringing in some slobs that are rich. So it's, it's easy to have goodwill when you don't even have to post a card and we still draw what we do. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Um, that I mean, that's that's a, a very good point. Um, along those same lines, let me ask you, Fresco, you've been doing some stuff in uh, Big Valley Wrestling, and it's interesting to watch what you've been able to accomplish there. When you know a, a number of the fan base is, is the same fan base, so they see your character in FSW versus your character you're portraying there which is you know a, a little more um well you're, you're singles you're you're in the forefront on that has that experience for you kind of helped you elevate your game at fsw because it's a different environment and you know some different just that you get a chance to work with but a lot of uh the uh fsw guys as well 
is that something that you enjoy doing to, again, kind of uh, season yourself a little bit more in an environment that is not necessarily under uh, Joe's eye? Uh, because I don't think, Joe, you probably don't really watch the, uh, like the matches from uh, Big Valley Wrestling or from some of the other places or, around the city or around the, uh, the states, uh, you know, in California or Arizona. So, Fresco, what is your goal in doing these other shows, um, and have you found it beneficial to you? You know, uh, honestly, it was always about one thing, and I was just, you know, being hungry and trying to make an opportunity somewhere and, and showing what you want, what you could do. Um, I pride myself on being an excellent, excellent tag team wrestler, but I'm also a really, really, really good singles wrestler as well, um, you know. Uh, you know, a uh, big Valley fighting champion, you know what I'm saying? You know, the seven times defended, making something, making a, 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 a title like that elevate more. It was, it was a personal test to myself um, of what I could do if something was given to me. And if, 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 people, if people got behind me, like how would I be able to capitalize on it? And Big Valley has given me the opportunity to, to, to do the like kind of the, the the solo run and, and and create stories and create rivalries you know uh fighting different opponents and then the fight champ challenge you know that was actually before that you know we did cracking christmas which you know i think people kind of sleeping on it because that's a cinematic wrestling christmas special you know you're not gonna find that at gcw you're not gonna find that anywhere else we recreated that and it's pretty damn funny i think so i think you know, I think you should put that next to Home Alone and Santa Claus, you know, for your, for your Christmas, you know, uh, seat backs. But, you know, that and then the Fight Champ Challenge, you know, Joe actually allowed us to have a couple of defenses, title defenses at FSW, you know, kind of kind of canonizing the, the, the fighting championship. And, you know, just it's been a really cool response. Uh, Big Valley's, you know, giving me a cool little chance to kind of, you know, cre create a... a, a create a wave, you know, to kind of just do something, some, something on my own, you know? I got a, ma I got a match for you. I want to happen at the FSW arena. What's that? What you got? I want you to go one-on-one -on -one with the youngest superstar in wrestling history, Bodie. Oh, no. Wow. I saw what <laughs> happened with Wasco. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I want, I want an FSW representative. Oh, uh. Yeah, you know, to you take know, the, the fighting championship from you. And the fight championship gonna require a little more than uh than Boaster to come up to the plate. You know, I'm I'm taking on your your you know your your favorite cutthroat at the CAC, you know, next week. You know, oh yeah, I heard for that. The eighth time. Yeah, he's trying to get two belts. I'm just, he's trying, he's trying. We are gonna see what he do though. I know, I know, he's the big fight guy, so. Uh, you know, I, I get past him, I'll be ready to cash in for uh for, for the heavyweight title. And then, you know, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, brother? Ha, ha, ha. Yes, sir. The run is on. You know, yeah, that, you know, that sounds good to me. We put the title on the line. And if you lose, Braxton is thrown out of FSW. I like it. Oh, my God. Look at, you know, look at this. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. We need we we need Braxton and FSW now. It's it's a it's a it's 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 got it's got to work. All right, we got to we got to find a medium ground here. You know, Braxton's a great asset to FSW. You know, despite everything, great asset. You know what I'm saying, Joe? So oh. you know we you know we'll, we'll we'll get that in there. But yeah, for sure. Title Joe. <laughs> Joe, did you uh, have you ever had a uh, FSW uh, stipulation where the loser becomes someone's butler because there you go. Uh, yeah, we did one time. Uh, Kid Vegas was wrestling Michael Modest. And, uh, if Modest lost, Modest's valet needed, was, was going to become Kid Vegas's valet for a month. And Mike Modest lost. And <laughs> one of the funniest skits in the history of FSW um, Modest went to Cheetahs and spoke to the Godfather who tried to give him a pep talk mm. about his girl. 
So you can go find that on YouTube. Classic. A classic. <laughs> Um, you know, speaking speaking of, you know, Fresco going to be taking on Cody, when we talk about FSW's tag teams, and a lot of times, you know, the, the list just kind of rolls off, and one of the tag teams that doesn't get mentioned as much is Fresco and Watson. What are your views in terms of trying to mix them in with such a big group of talented tag teams well uh the day after death proof won the tag titles they got the title shot so obviously they were you know enough on the radar you know it's not my fault they pissed off chris bay and he decided to interject himself in the match oh. but they got the opportunity they didn't win there's a lot of other teams, so now they have to go back to the bottom. But Come they're not now. even in the mix with wrestling, like Sky High and Heart and Solace because they've been busy with Chris Bay, who now has some new alliances. You know, I'd be interested to see a tag team match down the line. You know, Hero Lou and Shogun, who have great chemistry together against Fresco and Watson. So, and we, man, and we then beat we them could too. You know, Neil Braxton and Ed Nino Black. Uh, <laughs> you know, either way, either way, we get in the dub. Uh, Watson and I are, are FSW's, you know, best kept secret in the tag division. I, I feel like with, with time, it's only a matter of time before we come up on those tag team championships. You know, whatever's going on with Death Proof, that, that's fine. They got they got lucky at the anniversary show. If it wasn't for the ultimate finesse, you know, Chris Bay. But our time is going to come. It's going to be a point where it's the inevitable, and we need to have those tag team championships. We're going to have some more this month. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have some more. We're going to have all the gold in the faction, and we're going to walk into FSW Arena with other people's tag team titles saying, so, okay, since y'all want to duck the faction, we brought our own gold to the fold. How you like that? Uh-huh. Woohoo! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> See, Joe likes that. Joe, Joe, Joe knows what's up. Joe knows what's up. That tag division, man, huh? it, it's it's nice. It's real, it's deep. But pff, the faction, we we spreading like venom, you know, venom and spider-man. The symbiote's gonna crawl everywhere. That includes the tag division. We beat Sky High. We beat Hard and Solis. We beat the Spavacitos. Come on. Death Proof, we looking at you. We waiting. When we done with Chris Bay and his little friends, we hope to see you. We hope y'all still champions. <laughs> Shoot. Come on now. What else? Come on. Come on. Come on Hero, Hero Liu, Shogun, and Nino Black as uh, little friends. Um, yeah, they little friends. Yes. Northtown Nino needs to he need to pay me his tax on Northtown real estate. I was down there today on Civic Center and he hasn't paid me his rent. So if he wants to be uh, what do we call him, mayor of, uh, the mayor of Northtown, he needs to see the real leader. All right, he wore my he wore my hat at the last show like some jabron. I should have smacked the mess out of him. Ridiculous, Northtown. Well that. You know what? That's uh, that's leading to um, the uh, survival of the fittest, which is going to be Friday, September twenty fourth at Diversion Amusement. Um, the uh, doors open at six p.m. Show starts at seven. It's also going to be available on Fight TV. Joe, when you look at the progression of uh, this Bay and Hero and Shogun and Nino and the faction. Do you think that it's played itself nicely to give the fans a nice enough build to where the anticipation is where you thought it would be for this match? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. You know, adding Chris Bay more regularly can only help FSW as a whole. And, you know, Ice Williams, obviously, he has turned it up, you know, 10 notches since he's become part of the faction. 
So as we saw when Ice wrestled Funny Bone and when Ice wrestled Matt Vandegrift, you know, the crowd was hot. Like, <laughs> Ice is now that, that guy that, you know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, when it's a guy like Chris Bay, who many people are pretty certain can kick Ice Williams' ass, then you know, the fans are excited about it. So the rest of the faction, as well as Hero, Nino, and Shogun, you know, they all get to piggyback on those two guys. And it puts them in a bigger spotlight to where, you know, there's no doubt Shogun, Hero, Nino, they've all been very popular guys. But now they're, you know, they're rubbing elbows with, you know, one of the greatest in FSW history with Chris Bay. So it can only benefit all these guys to where like a guy like Watson, people are going to take a little more notice because he went one-on-one -on -one with Chris Bay, you know, and fortunately for everybody involved, it was uh, far better than, uh, you know, his last oh. outing before that. So look at that. He had, he had to bring up the last match. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Whew. You know, Watson, Watson had a great, great showing against Chris Bay. Yeah. from the week you know what i'm saying thank that god we had one. my uh, lumberjack uh, idea that way it kept the faction at bay and no pun intended but <laughs> we saw that the best man won you oh. know he watson because it was really a one-on-one -on -one match instead of a four-on-one match you know that matt vandergrift that you know he he should have won that match if if there if it was one-on-one -on -one, I'm pretty sure uh, we'd have a new No Limits champion. You know, the thing is, though, Matt Vandergriff got what he deserved because him and his little friend was jumping folks for months, beating up folks <laughs> with bats and all that other stuff. So it was only right that the faction did the whole locker room a favor and took out Matt Vandergriff and made sure that he did not walk out No Limits champion. Ice would have beat him anyways. We just made sure. <laughs> um, let, let me ask you, Fresco, along the lines of uh, when you did start, you were essentially a baby face. Um, has being able to be with the faction allowed you to basically dive into a side of yourself that you won't typically get to uh, show in public? And has it allowed you to play a little bit more than just, you know, having to concentrate on being a babyface, being in there, doing the wrestling moves, kind of going through the motions of that. Whereas here, not only do you get to be a heel, but you get to be a heel alongside your friends. What is that freedom like for you? I've always found it, you know, a cool challenge both, you know, good and bad side, you know, being, being, being a baby face, always like a challenge of having to earn, you know, the admiration and respect and people giving a, giving them about you. I've always found that cool. Cause it, 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 it got me getting creative of how to do that. And I did a really good job kind of, kind of with that come, come down. And then, and, and then with, you know, being with the faction, it really just allowed me to kind of, you know, just, to just dig deep and just kind of just let it loose, you know, just, you know, do that little extra dance move because I felt like doing it, you know, be the little extra smear because I wanted to, you know, give give the crowd a little extra, you know, capage because they won't, you know, talk, you know, talk on my hairline. So I, I got to make sure that, you know, I mother, you know, let them know what's up, you know, because you don't do that to me. You don't disrespect the fly. So it allows me to kind of like, you know, look let these folks know a little bit more who I am and who you and who you shouldn't mess with. So uh, honestly, you know, being with the faction all this time, we, we just love doing bad stuff. We love, you know, as soon as the referee's back is turned, we on something because we, we trying to make sure that we get the dub by any means necessary. So we enjoy it because there was times where we always, you know, got our ass kicked. You know, that we were trying to scrap and find our ways to have spots on the card. And now 
we're, we're rising up the ranks. So we're going to enjoy the hell out of beating up people on the way to the top. It just makes sense to me. Joe, when you are calling a match that involves the faction, is it something that you enjoy being able to kind of play off of their personalities to, you know, get in uh, some, some pretty funny lines at times. Is it something that when you have characters that are that big, um, you know, that bad um, and that they're not talent wise, but just evil. Um, is that something that you can play around with when you're on commentary? Yeah, it makes it a little easier. You know, it's the same thing like when, you know, you got the Suavecitos in a match. You know, the most difficult thing in wrestling is to get fans engaged in what you're doing. And, you know, guys like Remy, guys like Funny Bone, Cody, Hammerstone, Graves, you know, those guys have been doing it for a really long time. So they're kind of like grandfathered in that they have that respect from the fans. Now, when you watch the younger guys, they're the ones who have to go out there and bust their ass and earn the fans giving a shit. You know, we used, for example, a guy like Eli Everfly, you know, on and off for years, you know, he was never really a consistent guy. But after, you know, working Jay Vidal and doing the ladder match and his match with Gregory, sharp all of a sudden you could see the fans and then even when he worked adriel which was the last one it was like these fans started to realize like wow this guy's fucking great and they were you know people like to use the word term sleeping on well yeah a guy like eli ever was slept on here in fsw because he wasn't a guy that was seen two, three times a month. You know, there were times he wasn't around for four months, five months. And it's like, he had some great matches before. You know, I remember when he wrestled Jacob Austin Young when Jake was the no limits champion. And that's when I first really saw Eli Everfly working the submissions and the reversals and putting, you know, Jake into a pretzel. And it was like, wow, there's way more to this guy than just doing, you know, super cool stuff and sticking his tongue out, you know, that this guy was just a tremendous wrestler. You know, it's, it's similar to what I see in a guy like Thomas today who offers so much, but when they're not around that kind of stuff, you know, flies under the radar. So you get a young guy, you know, Brett, the threats, the perfect example that his personality has gotten the fans to hate his guts immensely, you know? And then on the other hand, you got a kid like Nick Xander who, you know, isn't big, isn't muscly, but he goes out there and he works his ass off and he's gotten himself and earned himself a spot. But the fans look at that guy as like, wow, he's my size, man, you know? there's a lot more respect because if they see a guy like Hammerstone walk through the door, you're like, Oh shit, this is a big motherfucker. You know, if you aren't good, people will shit all over you. Like, Oh, look at this big fucking bum. You know, nobody's expecting the guy five foot five, five foot six, five, seven, but you know, even Chris Bay, when he walked through the door and, you know, wrestled his first couple matches, you saw the guy had ability but he was treated differently by the fans than when Kevin Cross walked in the door and got to be on and people looking at him like, Oh, this monster. And then, you know, Cross was, you know, way above the curve when it came to persona and character and gimmick that the crowd was able to get behind him and basically turn him from a heel to a baby face without him doing anything that was nice or anything that would make people think you would want to cheer this guy other than the fans looked at him and said, holy shit, that's a fucking star. Like I can see that guy on raw and we joked about it and look at him now. Yeah. Um, Fresco along those lines, do 
for you being around guys that have come through FSW like that, who have trained there and being around the trainers who have years of experience with character work, has that been something that you've been able to um, develop your character through, you know, looking at some of the guys and talking to some of the guys and then using your own personality to just kind of engage that and come up with something that worked for you? In a, in a way, yeah, there was a lot of, you know, uh, extra influence of people you see around you that are, you know, really into character building. I think for me, I've kind of always had this persona of Fresco, you know, the, the origin of Fresco, I was actually given the nickname from a mamacita back in seventh grade, you know, in homeroom. I was trying to I was trying to figure out lines to talk to her and she was taking lines in Spanish. And when she said something, you'll say fresco. And I was like, fresco. She was like, yeah, she, you know, fresco, fresco. And I'm like, and it stuck. And that's, that's literally how the nickname fresco came, came about. And it's kind of created its own, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much me, just, just like everything else extended. So, yeah. so, so now I bring it to, to wrestling and it's like, you know, same bat time, same bat channel. Just now we're converting it into the wrestling universe and just add more sauce, just add more, just add more ingredients to the, to the plate. So they say, okay, you know, like you said something earlier about, you know, uh, the, the faction being like nation. What we're trying to do is be the first of, of its kind, because, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole lot of black factions around, you know, that, that are just, their whole gimmick is being black. And I'm like, you know, like, Hey, I get that. That's, 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 that might work for some people, but for us, we're, we're, we're more than that. We're, we're, we're superstars that, that believe that we should be in everything important because we're the most important people on the show. That's how we feel. That's how we treat it. So that's, that, that, that's kind of, that's kind of my mentality with it. And Fresco has always been the street sweeper. Like no matter what's going on, he's going to find a way to get his rather it's the Fresco show, rather it's FSW, rather it's other spots. You're going to hear about Fresco whether you want to or not. So I think just now with momentum we got in Vegas, everyone's, you know, people are starting to see more of what we're doing. You know, our shows, production, like a lot of cats, when they try to put out highlight clips of their stuff, man, it's just one camera, Roman, maybe a, maybe a cell phone, cam, footage, whatever, some, some, some ugly shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like with us, you know, we got boom, Roman camera, boom, hard cam, boom, third, third camera. It makes our it makes our show look ten times better. So so now we're in the mix and we look like professionals because that's how that's how we approach the game. So adding fresco to the wrestling world was just a matter of just adding the sauce and putting it all together, and it's been good so far. Absolutely, and and Joe, when you when you look at fresco from the time he started and his early matches to now is there something that sticks out to you as a moment when you felt that he was ready for an elevation um you know was there something that stuck out to you that made you go i think he's starting to get it well early on we knew he, he was like a deer in headlights you know i joke around a lot but you know him and him and Mondo De Niro, you know, they they were in way over their head, you know, and that's okay. Every everybody has to be at that point, you know, at some time. And at that point, uh, they had Primo as their manager, and when we had the discussion and talked about the faction initially, Primo was actually the manager. But it became kind of like, you know, overbearing. You basically had two managers in one group. You had two wrestlers and two managers. So, you know, the decision was made that, you know, well, we're going to have Primo go do his own thing because Braxton was more of the manager type because we were looking at Fresco and Watson, you know, as more of a tag team, you know. And once he got put into that group, I think he grew a lot quicker. I, I think his growth early on wasn't really there when he was in the other tag team. I, I think when those guys came together, 
you know, he had he had more experience at that time. Different things were happening. So I'd have to believe that his confidence level, which that's the most important thing. If you feel you're good enough to hang with certain guys now, that that's how it is. It's like in boxing when they're saying like, you know, when you become the champ, you know, you be you become so much better just because of your confidence level, because now you believe you're the best. And when you believe it, it transcends out in the match because even if there's something that screws up or messes up, you feel you are good enough to turn it back around. While when you're struggling early on and you're young and you screw up, it stays in your head and it probably makes the rest of the match the shits. And, you know, it's all about having that confidence level and having people believe in you. Fresco, in, in your mind, what was the difference between going from someone who was, you know, putting together, you know, just going out there to, to wrestle to get experience to someone who all of a sudden now it's starting to click and you're starting to understand not only psychology, but how things get easier when you're working with guys who are on the same level as you as well. I think probably the, uh, there were, there was a few moments, there was, there was two moments I think that stood out to me that told me that I was, I was onto something. One of it being a tag match, other one being a singles match. The, the tag match was actually a handicap match versus Sefa, Sefa Fatu early in our, in our ongoing feud with Sefa for all this time, you know, um, really that was the point where the faction was still, you know, still fresh, still, still, you know, still new, but we, we knew what we had to do. We had to make sure we made the other guys look like a million bucks. Sefa was just coming off a Nevada state run, um, you know, lost to Hammerstone. So he needed something, he needed something like tangible to have. And we, in the faction, we had that, we had a handicap match. And I remember just, knowing that, okay, I know what I need to do in this match to make sure it goes over well. And it just, it clicked because it wasn't about me doing anything specifically, make sure I got something in or nothing. It wasn't any about that. And, you know, you're always taught that, but when you actually feel that, okay, I don't, I don't need to this and this and this, I just need to do this, this, and this, it, it becomes much more clear that you have an objective for each match. So, so the Sefa match, you know, Sefa told, you know, Sefa would still say as a favorite match to watch back is him kicking our ass in that, in that handicap, you know, um, and, and me and Braxton did our damnedest to try to stop him. And it just, everything flowed really well. And then uh, the singles match was uh, me versus Ricky Mandel uh, at, uh, at, a, at, a, at a taco festival. I just got <laughs> off the, you know, kind of the breakup of Fresco De Niro. I was right. trying to figure things out. I wasn't quite with the faction yet. It was kind of a little grace period. And I knew that in my heart, I could be a really good singles wrestler. Uh, and I got the one-on-one -on -one with Ricky uh, Mandel. And, you know, the match I thought went really, really good as far as where I was at at the time. And he gave me some pointers, gave me some critiques. But that match really felt like, okay, like, you know, if I ever had the chance to do something like that, I'd I knock it out, you know what I'm saying? And um, I think that just those two combined showed me that, you know, I wasn't wasting my time and I, I was onto something. So, you know, keep, keep pushing and go harder. Yeah, no, those are some very good uh, insight points. Um, and Joe, you know, when you're looking at coming on uh, here, coming up uh, to survival of the fittest, and everything is now secure. You're 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 definitely in for uh, diversion amusement. Um, what now starts your mind going into the next process into what needs to get done to make sure that the show is going to come off the way you envision it? Well, everything is kind of in stages, you know. You know, we talked with Chris Bay. He made a commitment to us uh, to be able, you know, be able to be around as often as possible. You know, my job was to kind of work the schedule, you know, make sure we weren't running when he had impact tapings, for example, 
Uh, we had one issue because it was uh, New Japan. But the bottom line is it makes it easier because Impact's running in Vegas. So we definitely wouldn't run the same days anyway. So that kind of helps out for a couple of months. But the idea of survival of the fittest will then proceed into November's pay-per-view, which looks like it's going to be no escape. And we're hoping there's some finality in some of the feuds that are going on, you know, whether it's, you know, Hammerstones, Project Body Count versus the MK Army, uh, Jay Vidal and Gregory Sharp in the last man standing match, the ultimate finessers, you know, against the, uh, the faction. And, you know, you got to remember some of these are four on four elimination matches. So, some people might get eliminated, may break off into different things. Like, who's to say that Hero and Shogun don't break off to Fresco and Watson in, in tag matches? You know, I'll be 100% honest. I couldn't tell you yes or no. That isn't something like it's set in stone, but everything needs to be based off what happens on those shows and how everything goes about and how it plays out, and how the fans react, and, you know, who's available in schedules. You know, a guy like Danny Limelight was trying, basically, he wanted that spot that they ended up getting. And because the commitment from Limelight was not available to do things, so with Bay being around, obviously Bay is going to get first priority anyway. And then Danny Limelight's got the whole LAX thing going now with, you know, in the bodega. So it kind of made sense that after the anniversary show, but since we weren't able to really do anything in July, and then we didn't really be able to do anything in August, well, we had this show to come on. And they've been battling back and forth with Bay. You know, the yeah. idea of this show is, is to have, you know, the big matchups, that people are going to care about. You know what I mean? We're doing a tag gauntlet match because bottom line is death proof isn't involved in a blood feud. You know, they already were with the R and B and they beat them, you know, Toe and juicy have been kind of bouncing back and forth. Toe has been doing a lot more singles, you know, I'd love to see death proof and, you know, Toa and juicy Toko Uso, you know, that'd be a war. You know what I mean? But it's like, everything's got to make sense. Everything's got to, you know, fit into place. And the idea is trying to work everything to where it's something that the fans are really looking forward to. And, you know, no escape. We can't just throw three random steel cage matches together. Like, right. hey, Brett the Threat, you're going to wrestle Bodie in the steel cage. You're like, what the fuck is that about? You know what I mean? But if we had no escape coming up on September 24th and we announced Jay Vidal versus Gregory Sharp, people would be like, yeah, in the cage, awesome. If we had Ice Williams versus Chris Bay in the cage on September 24th, people would be like, oh, yeah, that fits perfectly. You know, and, and that's what we're trying to do. We want people to look at that and say, yeah, that's the matchup. I don't want people walking around being like, well, why isn't this guy wrestling that guy? You know, yeah. we see it enough in the WWE and things like, why is he wrestling that guy again? Like, oh, wow, another pay-per-view match with the same guys in it. You know, the baby face just beat the heel clean for the title, retained the title, yet somehow the heel still gets another title shot, even though he just lost clean. You know, it makes no sense, or even the opposite. The heel beats the baby face clean as a whistle, like a Lashley, and the guy gets another title shot. Like, yeah. how many title shots are we going to give Drew McIntyre? I love <sighs> it. But, you know, Lashley yeah. beat him last month. Why do I want to see it again this month? And then when I see it again, Lashley beats him anyway. So it's like, yeah. what purpose did it serve? You know, all they're trying to do is get from show to show to show and collect their money and they're done. 
we we have to make sure that the fans are satisfied they enjoy what they see for them to come back it's a much it's a much easier process to turn on your tv and watch something that you've watched for 30 years than yeah. watching a bunch of younger guys in most cases or, or local guys that have a good following. But if it's the same thing over and over, imagine if Hammerstone and Graves have wrestled each other 20 times in FSW. Like, who would give a shit? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. Um, and for you, Fresco, let me ask you, when you think about the fact that um, the... Uh, the network, the FSW network allows fans to, you know, for six ninety nine a month, go back and look at the whole history so they can see you grow in your career. But also now with Fight TV being something that, you know, people can buy the pay-per-view for 20 bucks, 25 bucks um, and see it around the world. Uh, what does that make you feel in terms of the fact that, Joe is essentially giving you guys a great opportunity and platform to be seen more than a lot of guys around the country are seeing. This is a great era right now. We're in the midst of a, of a, of a super era and, you know, you got to be crazy not to capitalize on what you got. Uh, you know, we, we know what type of resources we have here in the city and with FSW we know what we got to do. So that's why we're going so hard. That's why I'm going so hard. That's why, you know, I'm making sure I'm not, I'm not missing, you know, training. I'm making sure I'm, I'm in there. I'm making sure I'm working out. I'm making sure I'm doing the work because now, you know, you, you see what's going on out there in the wrestling world. It's like NBA free agency, you know, people, people popping up left and right, going to different squads, different reasons, different terms. People are reporting about wrestling. Like it's the NBA or NFL. You know, it's hot and, and, and we feel like there's a place, there's a place for Fresco Matter, there's a place for the faction, there's a place for, for talents all over the city. You, we, you know, it's a gold mine here. When people, when people come visit, when I see them at the spot, like I was down there that downtown for GCW, there's a lot of people who were just fans who, you know, who were like, man, like, you know, you guys down here are pretty good. I'm like, yeah, no shit. Yeah, you know, we, we, we're here. So, you know, check, you know, check us out. And cause we don't play We're uh, everyone here is kind of like uh, real competitive in their own way. So we're all trying to make sure that we make our mark because the city big, but the city small. So, yeah. you know, we, we, we see what's going on. We see what's going on over there. We see who's trying to make a move. And uh, you know, I know for the West coast, it's been like that for a while where it's kind of been like a bunch of islands, you know, yeah. of territories where, you know, guys are doing some maybe in the NorCal, but it never gets out of NorCal or it's a SoCal, never gets out of SoCal. Arizona is just now starting to build their, you know, wrestling scene up more and more. But now with, with Fight TV and what, with what we got at the, with the network, you can see our shit every, every time. So, so now, you know, if you're that wrestling enthusiast, if you're that wrestling, you know, podcaster, you know, that's trying to find the next fix. Check us out. Check out the faction. You know, the whole time y'all been calling us the faction. Who else is who else are you gonna call the faction? You know, nope. you you know, you call group spider group name. People just call us the faction because that's that's what we're trying to establish. You want that to feel for everybody. All the all the Twitter heads, all the people talk about rest, all the all the super fans, you know, they should they should get behind what we got the same way to get behind the other guys they got. But in due time, they're gonna see. I truly believe that. And do you think that um, the the idea of uh, you guys um, being there for each other, um, being that you guys are truly friends, does that help take a little of the pressure off um, and also keep you guys motivating each other? It it helps a ton. Um, you know, this 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 business is naturally a, a cutthroat business. You know, no pun. And it it's really everyone's trying to make their mark and you know there's spots there's 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 real estate everyone's trying to have you know everyone wants to move up the ranks everyone wants to be a champ somewhere everyone wants to have a run uh yeah. and for us we all knew that we probably could do that on our own separate comic book worlds 
But if we came together, you know, faction cinematic universe, it'll help us get to our shit way, way quicker than we could. It's like, you know, it's like let our powers combine, you know, Captain Planet in this hoe. We make sure, you know, that if we come together and apply pressure on these fools next, they got to see it. And it's going to, and it's happening quick. Ice's only been with us since March. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we, there's content, there's segments, there's matches that we have that some people, it would take, you know, a full year to highlight all that together. We've done that in four, four months. So yeah. imagine what we can, imagine with time, how much better we're going to get together and how much we're going to get better as individuals to working for a common goal for now. So it's like, man, sky's the limit. You know, universe is a limit, really. So we'll, let's get it popping. Absolutely. Um, as we kind of uh, start to wrap up here, um, Joe, is is there anything that um, you want the fans to know about um, the upcoming show, um, Survival of the Fittest? Um, is, is there anything that um, maybe that you haven't kind of... Uh, you know put out there yet or or anything that they should be on the lookout for um and um you know we're we're getting closer to it so um you know is is there something that really just you feel that this is why the fans should um you know purchase the pay-per-view on fight tv if uh they're not here in, in vegas well, we, we target probably, as I said, you know, escape the anniversary show against all odds, uh, survival of the fittest. There's four or five shows a year that we target as FSW's, you know, biggest shows. Kind of like, you know, everybody's got their thing. WWE's got the WrestleMania and Survivor Series and the Royal Rumble, <clears throat> and they're trying to get that money in the bank as an as another big one that ain't working too well. <clears throat> but those are the shows that we target everything toward. So all the eggs are in the basket, and we're we're partially there. But obviously, we got Future Shock this Friday, and Future Shock is generally geared toward the real young guys and giving them some opportunities. But we've kind of expanded it because we have so much good talent and we're just trying to spread the love around and getting people on shows and things. And the idea is, you know, once we have Future Shock on Friday, by Saturday or Sunday, the rest of the card will have shown itself and we will have had, you know, the setups that are necessary. So, you know, if you're a fan of what you've seen at the anniversary show, you know, if you're a fan of seeing, you know, what we did in the past with no escape and all, and all that other stuff, you know, this is, you know, a can't miss. You know, if, if you watched FSW GCW and, and you liked what you saw, well, the, you know, the best of the best are going to be there. And yep. we have enough confidence in our top guys to make sure it's a show that will be praised after it's over. Yeah, that's a, that's a very great point. And uh, again, I encourage people, um, it's going to be Friday, September 24th at 7 p.m. Um, if you can make it down to Diversion Amusement, get your tickets uh, as soon as you can. Uh, FSWVegas.com. Yep. And tickets seem, you know, they typically go, you know, pretty fast, especially the uh, front row and second row seats. Um, and uh, again, Fight TV will have the uh, option available for uh, for it to be bought on, on pay-per-view. Uh, Fresco, any final words uh, for everyone listening uh, before we uh, head on out? Yeah, you know, shoot. This is this is this is an area y'all seeing right now. What y'all witnessing right now with the roster we got here in Vegas and FSW is bar none. But you got to see the faction. September 24th, we're going to make sure that we are no doubt the greatest faction ever in Las Vegas. And we're going to take out Chris and his little friends. And don't forget also, y'all, you know, Fresco is doing his thing. CAC, September 13th. I know they're probably going to be whatever, 
but I take on the legend icon, Cutthroat Cody, defend my fighting championship. Got to defend the gold, you know, got to defend it one time for the one time. And also, don't forget y'all, the Fresco Show, the hottest live show in entertainment today. I will be having a special Sunday live edition with special guest, Zuka King. <laughs> oh, I had to drop a little bomb for the little plug for the Fresco Show. You know we had to make that going. You know we had to get that going, man. But thank y'all for having the fly on the show. It was only a, it was only a matter of time. It was only a matter of time. That's how we get that. You know, That's two years ago, who would have thunk I'd have a, I'd ever have that jabron fresco guy on the show? Oh, come on now. The come up, see, see, you know, people will know. Oh man, that guy, he's got potential. Let's give him a little time. See, I was a late bloomer my whole life, Joe. So, like, you know, I, I got late in the game, but when I got it, I got it. And, and now look, now look, hey, my show did uh over over three thousand views for the for the for the Fresco show with Joe DeFalco on it. You know, that's numbers, <laughs> numbers. You know, hey, uh, obviously, hey, I'm, I'm glad I was able to give Fresco the rub. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, you know, I I the rub was cool. But you know, you were you were on you were in a new world. So I, I gave you the cloud. That's how it goes. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> well, uh, and and before before uh, we uh, cut out, Fresco, what are your uh, social media handles so people can follow you? Uh, man, check me out on, on Twitter at Fresco Matic with uh, with two T's on that. I can't get the one T at, uh, off of it. And then uh, Fresco Matic on Instagram with one T. And then if you go to Facebook, go to the Fly Fresco Matic, you'll see the page. That's where you find all of the Fresco show episodes in full. You can check that out. And, you know, hey, go buy some damn merch. Go to Pro Wrestling Tees, the uh, Fresco Matic, and see I got a couple of, couple of good shirts. You know what I'm saying? And also, y'all, just check me out. I'm here. I'm here. I'm in your face. So you can't. You got to see me anyways. You know? <laughs> Oh man! And I with had that, little tequila here, you know. We so it's it's cool, man. It's cool. This made this show a lot more fun for me, you know. It's it's, it's, it's how we get down. It's how we get down. I'm gonna have to reach out to Jose Corvo now and uh, try to get some sponsorship off man, of that shoot, one. Shoot, I know. Hook a, hook us up. Shoot, I'm right now. Oh, see, hey, Mexico fly. Come on now. I'm opening the pipeline here from Mexico. The Fresco, Mexico. Hey, by the way, they love me in Mexico. They were chanting for me over at Mr. Tempest, a Mexican icon. They're saying, Fresco, Fresco, Fresco. I'm telling you, man, the crash might hit, hit your boy up. Then I'll really be a superstar on oh international boy. scene. <laughs> hey, hey, what's up, Conan? You need some black flavor in Mexico? You can always call Fresco Matic El Fresco. You know, get it going too, and and I can work. Come on now, come on now, yes sir. Hey, Joe, uh, any final any final words? Uh, uh, are the uh, Mexican crowds clamoring for you as well? Oh, man, uh, they, they're not clamoring for me, but you know, I think I can work out a deal uh, with Conan that if we can send Fresco over. And then we can uh, also send Braxton over, and then he'll get lost in customs. Oh, and no, 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 no. See, I knew you was going to go there. I knew you was going to go there with that. Come on now. Come on well, now. I'm looking out for your best interest, bro. <laughs> Look at you. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny, man. It's just, just like the rest of my career, bro. It's inevitable that Fresco is going to rise to the top. Mexico, AAA, CMLL. Yay, hey, Sam Adonis did it, you know. You know, uh, Black Magic did it. You know, El Fresco would be right up there next to El Santo and Mil Mascaris. You know, next next to the mural. Like, who's who's that, Papi? Oh, that's El Fresco. He's gonna be that's the next Sa Rios. The next Sa Rios. Oh, Sa Rios. <laughs> no, come on now. Ah, oh, come on now. Come on. Shoot, I got, I got, I gotta be at least Ultimo Dragon 2004. Yeah, gotta be one of that. You know, I have some kind of run. Well, with that being said, everyone, uh, A, uh, do your homework and find out who S.A. Rios was. 
uh, because a lot of you young kids probably don't remember him 20 years back now. And uh, B, thank you for all tuning in. And uh, please remember to support FSW. Uh, check out their website and uh, check out the network for $6.99 a month. And of course, Fight TV will have the pay per view, uh, uh, the survival of the fittest on Friday, September 24th at 7 p.m. And uh, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. Aha, cut the check. <laughs>